This is an introductory tutorial on the Gaia Archive simple form. In the welcome page of the Gaia Archive we see here, there are a different number of resources available that we can identify via these tabs. The most important of them is search because here we can retrieve data from the archive. The easiest way to do it for introductory users is the simple form, which is the subject of this tutorial. If we go to simple form, we can put the name of our favorite object, in this case UX Orionis, a variable star, and after typing it, we see it is enclosed within a green box. This means it has been resolved by a name resolver, in this case Simbad, even though we can also use the NASA Extragalactic Objects database if we want to. If we keep Simbad with a radius of 5 arc seconds and hit Submit Query, an output table appears under Query Results tab to which we have moved. A selection of columns is provided and uh, some table entries are shown. In this case we have only retrieved one record, so one object in the Kaya catalog, corresponding to our input object. This suggests that we have identified the counterpart to our object of interest. In case we want to see further details on the explanation of the different columns, we have right below the units in which they are expressed, but if we want to have more details, we can always go to the Gaia data model. If we click on the Gaia data model, a list of all the tables in the Gaia data list one appears. If we go to Diga source, additional details appear for the different fields. For example, if we see source ID, which is the main uh, identifier for the sources in the Gaia catalog, we see how it is constructed, including, for example, geometrical information in the form of a Hilpix index. If we go back to the archive and the simple form, we see that Indeed, we have selected by default to search in the TIGAS subsample that we know is the subset of the data list one for which a um, five parameters astronomical solution was retrieved, combining the information from the IPARCOS, Tycho, and um, Gaia observations within a single astrometric reduction. We can change the search radius, so instead of 5 arc seconds, we can use 5 arc minutes. And if we hit Submit Query again, we again see one single object. This is reasonable because the TIGAS sample is sparse in the sky, so there are not so many objects. If instead we search in the Gaia source, full 1.1 billion sources data release one catalog and we hit in submit query we see that we have multiple sources and now we have up to 127 candidates within that radius only 20 of them are shown simultaneously we can cycle through them using the arrows below if we go again to simple form, we see that we are not restricted to search in Gaia source and TIGAS alone. We can search in all the tables that are indexed in terms of celestial coordinates. We can, for example, search in the IPARCOS database. If we hit submit query, we see that UX Orionis also has a counterpart in IPARCOS catalog. We can 
also apply extra conditions. So if we search in Gaia source, remember we had 127 sources identified, we can add a condition, for example, in the magnitude. So if we select that the magnitude needs to be smaller than 18, we retrieve far less objects because only 49 objects within that concerts are brighter than magnitude 18. If we go again to simple form, we see that by default only a subset of columns is displayed. But we can access to the full set of them just uh, selecting them or not in this submenu. Imagine we want to retrieve ecliptic coordinates. If we submit query again, we see that in the right most part of the output table, the ecliptic longitude and latitude can be found. If we are not interested in just one object, but in a collection of them, we can upload them all at once using a text file. The text file has a very simple format. It's just one entry per line, so it's pure and simple text. And the only thing that needs to be included in each line is the name of the object that needs to be resolved by the name resolver service. If we use this file with five input objects, we need to go to the File tab and then Browse. If we hit Open, we see that the file has been validated. Five valid targets have been found by the name resolver and we are now ready to hit the Submit Query button. Let's remove the condition we had before. And we see six possible counterparts to our five input uh, sources. It is important to note that the original name of the sources is lost, so the only thing that we have is a list of objects and it is our task to identify which are the possible counterparts to our uh, original sources. If we want more sophisticated searches for multiple objects where the original name is kept, then that can be done following the tutorials, in particular the White Dwarfs Exploration Tutorial, where uh, such a search is described. If we go back to the simple form, we can also search for objects not just around um, sources listed in a, a name resolving service, but we can also use whatever coordinate we want in the sky. So imagine we want to retrieve data around the North Ecliptic Pole, which was observed multiple times during the initial phase of the Gaia nominal mission. After introducing the coordinates, we can search for a radius of 5 arc minutes in Gaia source. And a list of uh, objects is retrieved. Note that the ecliptic latitude is very high as expected for such a small radius query around the north ecliptic pole. In addition to a concert around a location in the sky, also a box query can be carried out. For a box query, what we need are the 
right ascension um, and declination range to be uh, explored. If we select one degree, one square degree around the Pleiades location, it is important to note that the right ascension range needs to be corrected by the cosine of the declination projection factor on the sphere. If we select only TIGAS sources or sources with parallax around the Pleiades field of view, we see 24 such sources have been retrieved. It is important to note that the box search is not searching meridians and parallels, but a quadrilateral constructed by great circle segments. This means that the meridians, because they are great circles, they are kept so the um, segments uh, going from lower declination to higher declination, they are what expected meridians, but in the horizontal direction we don't have parallels, we have segments of great circle. This is um, not a problem when we have a very small box, box um, search, but it's important for very big boxes and when those boxes are placed close to the celestial poles where significant distortion can be found and great care needs to be done when using the box search. If we go again to the query results, some important thing to note is that uh, no, the different queries that we have launched are still they are available for us on top and we see no job ID. No job ID means we have launched synchronous queries which are expected to be short in execution and uh, the query that was used to launch them is uh, available if we hover on top of the different uh, no job ID boxes. This query is the is what has been run behind the simple form. In fact, what we have done the, using the simple form is just launching ADQL queries, which are a dialect of a SQL, the language used to communicate with relational databases, and it can be accessed through the ADQL form tab. This ADQL form tab, how to use it, it's well far beyond the scope of this tutorial, and additional details can be found in other tutorials, in the help pages, or in the ADQL cookbook developed by Deepak. The only thing that needs to be uh, known is that uh, the results of those, uh, looking at the results of any of those queries, we can hit on show query in ADQL form, which automatically pastes the ADQL query that was used to generate those results and we can then modify it and customize to our needs. For example, removing the top 500 limit that is by default added on those queries. This query can also be retrieved if we go from simple form and instead of submitting the query, we hit in show query so the query is also visualized in the ADQL form. So that's all. Enjoy exploring the Gaia archive.